Up next, I want us to start talking about the request object. If you understand the cycle of an application, you understand that a customer creates a request and then the server comes up with a response. Up until now, most of what we've done has been dealing with the response, with the exception of being able to retrieve the customer ID, which we did through route model binding, like so. But I really want to start to focus on the request. Notice that we used this request helper function. Let's dive a little bit deeper in understanding what Laravel is actually doing behind the scene. If we take a look at this request, here's the actual implementation of this function. Don't get bogged down with the details of this. I just want to show you a little bit of the magic under the hood, just so you start to understand a little bit of the concepts behind these functions that you'll see in Laravel. You may think they are just big magical functions, and they're not. They are leveraging something called the service container. That is an advanced concept in Laravel, but all you need to know about the service container for now is that it is a huge array that has every single piece of data that your application needs to run. And these could be classes, or they could be keys, they could be all sorts of things. Just think of the service container as a huge array of data. Whenever we do something like app request, we're simply just grabbing the request inside this huge array that I'm talking about. And that's it. Now this, there are different flows here, right? And one of them would be, well, if it's null, then return the entire request. If you have a key, then give me only the particular key. So just slightly different implementations. The only thing I need you to remember from this is that the service container is a big array that contains classes and other things. And that's what these helper functions use. Whenever I use it this way, or well, you may see in a slightly different way, it doesn't matter how you use it because under the hood, Laravel does the exact same thing. You may see the request being grabbed in a different way. So I do want to show you how that works. Sometimes you'll see something in here, injected into a particular place. Why don't we try it that way? Let's actually do it right here in the index method. And let's just go ahead and do it the other way. Luminate, HTTP, request. Then you could also grab your request. Now, if you notice up here, it's kind of already imported for us. It comes with every single controller that Laravel uses. So we don't need to have this full namespace. We can simply just have request. This request is the exact same request as the other request. And I can prove it to you with a small side effect. We can die and dump, that's DD. Let's go ahead and die and dump this new variable that we just created and injected over the top. I will hit refresh right here and notice that this is a request object. It has info to the path. It's got the session data in it. It's got all sorts of cool stuff in it. Now I'm going to change this and I will use the helper function instead. So if I say request as a helper function, I'll hit refresh. And what do you know? I get the exact same thing. There is absolutely no difference at all. Some people prefer to have it like so. And some people prefer to use the helper function. I will most of the time use the helper function just because I don't want to have this extra import up here. It's just a little bit more overhead that I have to process in my head. So I prefer this method, but again, it is the exact same thing because all it does is it dives into this huge array that is your application called the service container and it gets back the request object. Now, one cool thing that we could do here, let me actually revert back since we already have it imported. So we'll use the request. And we could say, okay, give me the query parameters for active. Okay. If I hit refresh, it says it's null. Let's add a query string. So right at the end of this, we can add a query string for active and we could say only show me active. So notice that now one is what is being reflected. Anything that I pass in here, hello, that gets passed through. That's pretty cool, right? So maybe what we could do is we can use a query string to show active and inactive customers using this new request object that we know about. So instead of hard coding a one, why don't I just grab this right here, let me copy it, and I can erase this entire line. And now instead of one, I will replace the one with my request active. Okay? So now if I hit refresh, I've got two, but now I could say, zero and now I don't have any customers to show 
So just like that, we are using the request to be able to show inactive and active customers. Why don't we put this in a link here so we could just make it really easy. Let's go into that customer.index, this one right here. Let's add some links over the top. Let's go ahead and do this one here will be slash customers. And we'll say active equals one. And we'll say active customers. Let's just keep it simple. We'll just say active. And then on this one, we'll do the exact same thing. But this one will be active equals zero. Okay, so these would be inactive customers. Okay, give this a refresh. So now I have active customers and inactive customers. And all I am doing is just simply changing this right here. Wouldn't it be nice though to have a default? Because let's see what happens if there isn't one. Well, it defaults to probably zero is I guess what I could tell. Here's one cool thing that you could do whenever you're retrieving this. As a second argument, you can pass through a default. So I will say my default will be active customers, which will be one. Now, if I hit refresh, now, even though I don't have one, we can tell that it is only grabbing active customers. So we can grab active customers this way, or just simply not have anything in here. And we have a default in place. Pretty cool, right? So we can say inactive customers, active customers, and then we have add new customers. So let's go ahead and recap everything that we talked about. The request is just simply what the user is sending through to the server. We have to remember the steps here. The request again is what comes in and then the response is what the server sends back. We can tap into the request by simply using the request out of the illuminate HTTP request, but it doesn't matter how you use it because at the end of the day, it always comes from the same exact place and it will return the exact same thing. If you recall, Earlier in the series, we used this request function. And if we dive into this request function, you'll see that all it does is it simply goes into my application, this big array that we call the service container, and it grabs the request. And I proved to you that it does the exact same thing. Now, if we go back up here, remember that every controller automatically imports this illuminate HTTP request. And we can simply just use it inside one of our methods. In this particular case, we are using it to figure out if we're going to show active customers or inactive customers. Now we use this query. There are other methods that you can use like input and things like that. And they will grab other request objects, not only from the query, but from a form. For example, you can use input to grab form inputs. But the important concept to understand here is that we are able to tap into the request and use it to our advantage like we did in this particular example.